Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorella Show. This is Jack Benedict. We're going to talk IUP footballs. The Crimson Hawks come away with our ninth win of the year, 35-6 to over Edinburgh last week, and we get ready for Shippensburg this week. We'll talk about the Raiders here in just a few moments. You know, it's not too often, Coach, that we talk about a game where you win a ball game and you don't rush for any yards. Right. It's just incredible, but it shows, I think, maybe – you said before, you have to adapt what the opposition's going to give you. Right. I, I mean, they had sold out to stop the run. They ran a lot of run blitzes. We're playing, you know, blitzing linebackers on our side of the line of scrimmage with any run action, uh, and it was especially in, inside the tackle. So, you know, you try to establish the inside run, and, and sometimes you can bang your head against the wall a little bit, uh, you know, with our quarterback and our receivers. What that allows us is a lot of one-on-one -on -one outside, and we took it. Uh, you know, we hit a lot of quick game, short throws uh, early in the game, and then we hit three deep balls, uh, one to Dwayne, one to JoJo, actually two to Dwayne, uh, because they were overloading the box. So, you know, you could beat your head against the wall and, and try to, you know, mm -hmm. let your ego get involved and say, hey, we got to run the ball. Now, I'm not against that. You know, we're trying to establish the run. Sure. Uh, I was a little disappointed we didn't get more of our outside run game going. The two big plays that we had out there, we got called for penalty both times. One was, they're both good calls. Uh, Justice had cut a guy on the perimeter and he, his leg whipped and he, he did. It was a trip. It was a great call, actually. And then on another run on a toss play, uh, 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 Malik? No, number no. four. Why, why am I drawing a blank here? I must be getting too oh, old. Oh, you mean uh, Don, McNeil. Don McNeil. Got called for a, yeah. a push in the back. It, it was kind of ticky-tacky, but that was like an eight to ten yard gain that got called back. So our two best runs, we had one that went for 16 that got called back, and another one that went for 10 that got called back. So, you know, we, we, didn't, we had the outside run game a little bit, but we got called for a couple penalties. They, they, clo they, they just denied the inside run game. And uh, so we had to go outside and throw with a pretty good quarterback and some pretty good receivers. The catch that JoJo makes, uh, phenomenal. You know, the two deep balls that he caught, the one was a great catch. They had him double covered. The other one, he just beat the corner and pressed for a touchdown. And then Dwayne caught the deep one in one-on-one -on -one coverage where they were, blitz they were, they were running a lot of six-man pressures uh, and blitzing a lot, when it, whether it was run or pass. Mm -hmm. So they, they played the way they needed to play defensively to take chances because they weren't, you know, I don't think they felt really good about their offense. Mm -hmm. uh, we're playing really close to the vest or down to their third quarterback. So the answer, I guess it's a long answer to the question, they just wouldn't allow us to run the ball inside. Yeah, that was a good explanation. Anyway, I, I, I still picture the pass play from Quinton to JoJo that was just laid in there perfectly. I mean, if you want to show something on video, right. this is the way it's done. But they totally sold out on that play. Yeah, and then, and then the other one, they had him double covered, and he just went up and, got, and, and made it. That, that was a phenomenal catch. You know, I could see the reaction by their two defenders. They were like, you know, are you kidding me? We had two guys here. But Quentin has a knack to be able to throw the ball when guys are covered just in the right spot where only our guy can catch it. And our guys have done a great job of going up and getting, you know, the 50-50 ball. On the other side, defense, you had a lot of big plays again. You held them to two field goals. Your linebackers were solid. Streeter had a great game. Uh, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. They were, and uh, how about the beginning where Harrison Dreyer comes in? You, you haven't used him that much as right. a star back. Picks off one for you. Those are all all things that contribute to this win. Right. I thought uh, Streeter played a great game into the boundary. He had a little slow start, a couple coverages. He didn't play right into the boundary there. We got him squared away and then he had two interceptions. The one interception he almost had was a phenomenal play because he really saved the, the free safety who was wrong in the coverage. And I said Mike Nash ought to buy him dinner every day this week because he <laughs> saved them twice, actually, in two coverages. Uh, potentially, he could have had four interceptions. If the quarterback would have made a better throw on, on the one, it would have been an interception by Nas, and it might have been a pick six. And then he, he had another interception in his hand, so he potentially could have four interceptions. He also had a couple breakups, but he also did a great job in run support. He, he played tremendous. Uh, and then Dreyer's interception in the, uh, early in the game is a phenomenal play, just a, a talented play. It's a great athletic play. A great athletic play. Uh, you know, you, you, you can't really coach what he did. It, it was a phenomenal play. He's, he's given us a, a, a spark there at Star. 
Uh, he's playing really well, and he's only played two or three games, so his best football's in front of him. Uh, you know, a couple runs came out early, and then we, we, we solidified our run defense. So, you know, the bottom line is, and we talk about this on defense all the time, is, you know, statistics sometimes are good, sometimes they don't tell the story, sometimes they do. The bottom line is how many points do they score, and we didn't let them score a touchdown again oh. for the fourth time this year. So, yeah. however it transpires, that's, that's all that matters is how many points they score. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but we got a, we got a tough te test this week, definitely. Yeah, we'll talk about Chip here in just a moment. Special teams improvement, that certainly. Uh, we gave honorable mention to Grubbs. Uh, there was no return. I mean, you know, maybe kicks 38 or 40 or 42, right. or no return. So you kept Gregory out of the game. Our special teams probably broke the game open. You know, it's 14-3. Dwayne gets the big punt return. Nas Streeter has three great kickoff returns. Beautiful. You know, uh, obviously we're running back kicks after they kicked two field goals, so we got the momentum right back with two of his returns. He, he had 93 yards on three returns, and they, they were really great returns. We blocked them pretty good, but he made three or four guys miss. Dwayne obviously had a 20-yard return and the big 56-yard return on the punt. And then Grubbs averaged 41 yards a punt. We had six punts, and five of his were inside the 20. And uh, Gregory did not have a punt return. He had the fair catch, too. And then he only had a 16-yard return on kickoff. So probably when you look at the, the, the whole game as a whole, it was probably the special teams that w w was probably the difference in us you know, getting the game under control. We got up 21-6 after the punt return mm. and, uh, and Nas's kickoff returns and then Grubbs' punt and, you know, it was big. It was big. I think we graded out at 85% in the kicking in, which was our best this year. Mm, great, yeah, absolutely. And extra points, of course, no problem there. Uh, give us an update on Dwayne Brown, Jeff Arnold, and uh, these guys who are, you know. Well, right now, uh, Jeff is questionable. Mm -hmm. uh, We'll see how he, he gets through this week. Uh, Dwayne is probably questionable too. He you know he got an ankle. Hopefully we can get him to start practicing later in the week. Uh, they're neither in or out right now. Uh, Ronye Mitchell may be back this week. He's been out all year. Well, since the last since the third game, he had a broken bone in his forearm. He may be available this week. So. Uh, you know, those are three guys. You know, Ronye obviously hasn't played in seven weeks, but he was a big part of our defensive front. He has a chance to play. Uh, Jeff is probably questionable, and so is Dwayne. You know, we'll just see later in the week how they are, and we'll go from there. But we've got, you know, we feel good about the guys we can put in at wide eye, Carter, Kelly. You know, we, we've got some weapons there. And, uh, and then offensively, we got McAllister and Pietro Polo that, that uh, can play in Jeff's spot, so we'll just have to wait and see how they, they develop this week. Mm -hmm. I have some guys that I work with and I call them worry warts. They worry about everything. Right. And I said, hey, you got to look at positives. But when we talk about Shippensburg, I think about them, and, and, and this has nothing to do with last year and watching some of the video, but we've talked before. This is a team that's four and six, but they have some weapons, don't they? They're four and six, but I think that's probably not really the story. They're four and three in the league. Uh, they had some really tough crossovers. They played Cal, they played Slippery Rock. So those were two really tough crossover games for them. Uh, they're four and three in the league. They, they gave Shepard on the road. They lost 34-31. It, it could have went either way, back and forth. There was never, a, it was never, uh, the deficit was never more than one score. They just went back and forth. It was a great game. They very easily could have won that game at Shepard. Uh, and they're four and three in their conference. Um, the only game they really, they, they played Westchester really well also. Uh, the only game that they really didn't play very good in in their league was Kutztown. They just, they got behind early and the quarterback got banged up. But uh, offensively, I, I'd be very uh, frank, they're, they're as good offensively as, as anybody we've played. Maybe not slippery rock type, but you know, really good at quarterback. Very efficient in the offensive line. They got a great tight end, really good wide outs, great scheme. Uh, you know, so they're, they're, they're going to be a handful for us, both defensively, I mean, both our defense and our offense, because mm -hmm. they're playing a lot better now on defense. And they're coming around, you know, it's their senior day and all that sort right. of thing. I notice also they have 20 fewer penalties than their opposition. Right. Penalties continue to be in sure. double figures for IUP. 
You know, discipline, yeah. right? Well, late in the game, but you know, there's some penalties that are penalties that just happen. They're football penalties. You know, Dwayne uh, Justice got called for a trip on a cut block. Those things happen. Uh, he got called for a holding call on a sprint that I, we really didn't see a hold. But you know, those are football plays. But we we had four penalties uh, after the whistle that we we, we can't have. Uh, we had two of them on defense, and you know, they're retaliatory, but. You know they're getting called. You know they don't call it on the first guy; they call it on the second guy, and we we got to learn to understand that. And then we had two in the kicking game that were after the whistle that we can't have. And uh, you know they've been addressed. Hopefully our guys understand when you're winning 35-6, those penalties don't come back to hurt you. But if you get in a one-score game, it, it'll come back and, and get you. Mm. Last week for the regional rankings, teams for the playoff will be announced on right. Sunday. No, no, num, number uh, three, Notre Dame, Ohio, they lose to Glenville State, number six, Urbana lose. It's going to be very interesting how this all comes about. Right. But it all boils down to one thing, right? You got to win your game, and then the chips fall where right. they may, right? Well, I'll, I'll pull my inner James Franklin, Shippensburg, 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 Shippensburg. <laughs> That's it, huh? There's your answer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, uh, it's good that uh, you go into a, a game like this, an 11th game, and on the road. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's been in the past, but you've played a lot better ball sometimes on the road than you we, do we, at home. We've been a great road team. Uh, you know, in the last three years, we lost uh, at Cal at night, and we lost this year at Slippery Rock, both really close games. Those are our two defeats the last three years on the road. Uh, and we, we've had some big road wins, you know, against good people, Ashland, Slippery Rock, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this will be a, a great test for us. Uh, if we are a playoff team, we'll have to prove it this week because, in essence, this is a playoff game, really. Mm -hmm. And it's on the road against a team that beat us. They, they, they whipped us last year, point blank. You know, forget about saying, well, we didn't play good, we didn't – you know, we weren't into the game because we weren't going to make the play. We don't, those excuses don't matter. Shippensburg came in here last year and, and physically dominated us. Uh, so we, we got to, you know, have a short, you know, memory in regards to, you know, that was last year. This is this year. Let's like, let's wipe the slate clean. But I think this is a great test for us to go on the road against a good opponent, a really good quarterback. Uh, uh, Coach Matuski does a great job. They're very disciplined. They're good on special teams. They play extremely hard. You're gonna. Have, they make you beat them. Uh, they don't give you a lot of. You know. They don't. You know. Have a lot of turnovers and a lot of penalties. And they don't make a lot of mistakes. They make you line up and beat them. Uh, very impressed with them at Shepherd. They, they played a great game. It's a shame they lost that game. They very easily could have won it. Mm -hmm. Probably was the, even though they didn't win. It was probably their best game of the year. Uh, so it's going to be, this is going to be as tough a test as a, you know, I know people are probably saying, yeah, you know, you're just saying that. I'm, I'm really going to come out and say that this will be as tough a game as we have, including a playoff game. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, those of us that see these teams, uh, we would agree with you. How about their defense, just briefly and defensively? We talked about how good their offense is, but are they doing anything else differently or they're just fundamentally sound? They're very fundamentally sound, and here's what's happened. They had nine starters that were seniors last year. They came in here last year and played as good a game defensively against us as any, anybody we've played in two years here. Uh, and they had nine seniors on that defense. So it's taken them time to – infiltrate their new starters. They're fairly young. First five or six weeks of the season, they had their issues. Uh, but I think what you have to do, and we were talking, you know, uh, with the offensive staff, I was talking with them this morning saying, you know, I really think what we better watch is their last three games because they've played really well. Like if you watch their games, their first six or seven games and watch their defense, it looks nothing like what you see the last three totally weeks. Different. Totally different. Because they have guys now that are in their sixth, seventh, eighth start. They had nine seniors starting last year. So when you watch them the last three weeks, they look like a totally different defense. Uh, and, and I think that's important to understand. And then obviously look at what they did to us last year. Now it's different people, sure. but it's still the same scheme, the same defense. Uh, they've been running the same defense for years, uh, stack front, you know, with read coverage, and they're, they're really good at it. Uh, they do it a lot. They don't, 
really change a whole lot. So scheme wise, it'll be very similar to what they did last year against us. But personnel wise, they're 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 different and they're getting better. Mm -hmm. All right, it's a challenge, but that's what it's all about. So good luck on Saturday. Appreciate it, Jack. Yeah. One o'clock Saturday, the kickoff at Shippensburg. It's a short trip, two and a half hours across the state, and uh, I think you'll see yourself a good game. We uh, thank the coach and uh, the whole family for joining us here today as part of our Coach Tortorella show. Jack Benedict here. Have a nice evening.